Let us start with the one and only Paramore, their album After Laughter, which is a nice rhyme. Uh, they're a female-fronted rock band from Tennessee who formed in 2004. The original lineup includes Haley Williams on vocals, brothers Josh and Zach Farrow on lead guitar and drums, respectively, Jeremy Davis on bass, and Jason Bynum on rhythm guitar. And after their debut album, All We Know Is Falling, was released in 2005, the follow-up album Riot came out in 2007 and quickly pushed the band into the mainstream. That album includes successful hits like Misery Business and Crush, Crush, Crush. And a combination of alternative rock, pop, punk, and emo led the group to be labeled as the new No Doubt. And in 2010, founding members Josh and Zach left the group, claiming the band was a manufactured product of a major label and accused Haley of treating them as her solo project. Then in 2013, as a three-piece, they released their fourth album, which was self-titled. That album saw the group begin to add some new wave and some synth pop to their sound. It's been now it's been four years since that album came out, and this latest album is Paramore's fifth release. And there are a few changes. Do you know what those changes are, Mark? Changes to what? The group in general. Uh, I don't know. All right. <laughs> I didn't think so, so I'm going to blow your mind on this one. This album does not feature bassist Jeremy Davis, who left the group in 2015. I'm sorry if that upsets you, but... Oh, my God. Jeremy, where have you been? (laughs) However, it does include the return of the original drummer, Zach Farrow, is back. And with the guitarist, uh, Taylor York, who joined the group in 2007, the group is still a three-piece, unfortunately, but Mm -hmm. they got the drummer back. But as with the last album, the band has decided to continue exploring the poppy new wave genre that they've been doing. So for all you old school like Paramore fans who think Zach's return will lead them to being returning to their rocking uh, pop punk roots, you need to give up on that dream right now. It is done. It's not happening. You might as well skip this album and this review entirely. That's my rating on for you got old school fans. All right. So everyone that's still remaining, here we go with the review of the new album. This album starts off with the title track, or not title track, the song Hard Times. And it's like an upbeat 80s uh, style funk song featuring steel drum beats and infectious groovy bass lines. The catchy bubblegum pop lyrics get stuck in your head immediately. And <laughs> I love that song. I love it. Like I hear it once and I cannot get out of my head. That is how you make a good pop song. Um, I see you smiling at me, Mark. You don't <laughs> you, you love it as much as you. It's a guilty pleasure. You love it too, don't you? I like it. <laughs> exactly. I do like it. I, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll give you a preview. I like this record. Yes. <laughs> um, really? You yeah. like it a lot? Okay. I I thought, I, it's one of those things where I go, I don't know if I'll, like, I don't know if I could, like, roll my windows down and have this <laughs> blasting in the car. <laughs> you know? I don't know if I'd feel comfortable with it exactly. <laughs> but Driving, like, a big white van and all. <laughs> yeah, but, no, I think, ah, I really like the vibe. It's a very summer record. Um, you know, it's it, it feels very like uh, talking heads type, like bouncy, dancey, you know, new wave ish type, maybe a little blondie or something. But yeah, um, yeah, no, like I think it's it it's it's really good because, yeah, before this, my only real knowledge of Paramore was when they first came out I'm like, all right, well, they're that that girl pop punk band with the red hair. Yeah. And they have those couple songs that are catchy, but they're for like when they came out, I was maybe like, you know, 18 or 19, probably or whatever. Um, I felt like they were like for younger kids. Yeah. <laughs> um, when I was working at the CD store, I was telling you this last week before we uh, we wrap, you know, off air. Um, we listened to, I guess, their first album. OK. Pretty frequently at, in the store. And then um, maybe one of their third, I don't know, the, brand, the one with the butterfly on the cover. Okay, the, and that the song one, yes. and that album is is a little different, and it has some has some songs on it. That, that one I, I feel is like the, uh, the the transitional record yeah. where it's not as uh, dancey as the last two, but that one is not as punk as the first two. Yeah, but so then I, go, going into like their back catalog a little bit just to try to figure out what do I actually know about this band, and I feel like on their last album they had that that song. The one that was more dancey. Yeah, <laughs> that was yeah. A, I don't know. That one has the song that they're playing now. Um, 
Still Into You, and they're also playing that, that one, you know, yeah. other song. I can't remember, which I don't like as much as Still Into You, but fortunately I can't think of it. But this album, I love, like, the thing I, uh, that I guess me and Mark are saying is this sound album is f***ing adorable. <laughs> I love it, and I want... I want to put like my 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 dog ears, some like pink bows, and like dance in front of like a mirror and sing it into a hairbrush. I I I wouldn't be embarrassed playing it on, in in the car, <laughs> like blasting down the street. Um, the first two songs are, are exactly what we say, and the third song called "Told You So" continues like the same thing. It's got like a Daft Punk s vibe with like the like the uh, some light uh, melodic uh, guitar work throughout. Um, songs like I I see later in this track listing, the songs called like Pool. The song called um, Grudges like really shows cases the album's new wave sound by mixing like lighthearted rock with keyboards and bouncy lyrics while Caught in the Middle has like that reggae wa- wave mm-hmm. vibe. I thought that song reminded me like a little bit of The Police. So this album really showcases like this whole like 80s like, you know, retro thing happening with sprinkled throughout. It's not like a whole throw of that. Yeah, but I think they do it really well. You know, yeah. it's not like. It's not like the Bruno Mars record where it's like, oh, he's doing this throwback thing. Like they're they're taking sounds from that era, but it, it sounds it like modern. yeah, I like that, it yeah. does sound like something like that nineteen seventy five record. It's mm-hmm. the same kind of vibe, you know. It's like this bouncy new kind of danceable pop that exists today. That, yeah, you know, I think is is it works really well for them, and I think it works for her vocals as well because. You know, I can understand why she would want to get away from the, just the punk, the punk type sound. Because I went back and listened to a couple of seconds of some of their older <laughs> songs. If I'm being honest, um, but yeah, I was like, I, I like her as a singer more than I like her as like a punk singer. You know, okay. yeah, like yeah. the early stuff sounds more gimmicky to me now hmm. because I feel like she has such a great voice that she deserves to be singing songs that actually make it sound like she has a good voice rather than just her screaming about stuff, you know I mean? Um, so I think that, you know, the direction the band's going in is actually like, it makes a lot more sense to me. The only thing I don't like, if I'm going to be a little negative about some of this stuff is I feel like if you're a three piece, they don't sound like a three piece. They sound like a three piece that has a bunch of people in the studio playing keyboards yeah. over their music, you know? So, I mean, to me, that's just the one thing I don't like is when I'm like checking out a band and then you find out, that half of the, mu- the in- instruments on their songs were done by like studio people, right. you know, or like when you know they ha- they go to play live and there's six people on the stage that aren't part of the quote unquote band, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's like, but you know, I know when you become a band, it's more contract stuff, and you know, like Green Day is a three piece, but they've got that fourth member dude yeah. who's been touring with them forever. And they got a keyboardist too, <laughs> and they have a keyboardist yeah. now too. But yeah, it's one of those things where you're like, all right, well, why don't you just make them part of the band, you know? And I guess there's, there's, you know, especially with something like Green Day. I mean, there's contracts and yeah. who owns what percentage of what, you know, revenue streams and whatever. And but I'm interested that your com- complaint is that because I thought we were gonna do the same thing. My complaint on this album is, I feel like when they they make the mistake of bringing down the mood because it's really upbeat, and then in the middle of the record they bring it down with like the power ballads, like about for twenty six. Yeah, t- yeah. twenty six is like. An absolute buzzkill, and then the song uh, "Forgiveness" is like a, like a really like um, cliche like alternative pop sounds like what Kelly Clarkson does, mm-hmm. and um, the song uh, "Fake Happy" is a uh, is such a is such a generic pop rock song about only smiling on the outside, one of those like kind of things. Yeah. So at that point, the energy of the record comes to such a grinding halt. Like even on that song when they're doing the ba ba ba's during the bridge, I'm like, it's not, it's, it's too late. What are you gonna do now? We're, we only got like three more songs to go. How are you gonna bring it up? But they bring it back to me. I thought with the song Idol Worship, and it's like got like the lyrics about um, not worshiping like uh, your idols. So it's like the other spelling of idol. I thought that was a good song. Um, but I found the song after that called um, No Friend, which is like just only has like idle chatter with the instrumentation. Oh yeah. I was like, yeah, that's yeah, such that. a waste of three minutes. Like what is even <laughs> happening here? And I found out I heard they got some actual um, famous artists to be doing the talking. I'm like, you totally underuse them. Like, cause the song like kind of is like the outro of the previous song, but mm. it's so long. It's like, why is this even a track? You know, I kind of, I don't know. I mean, I don't you did like it. I think it's fine. It was one of those things where I was like, what is it? I can't understand the words. Yeah. I was like, what's going on? Am I, is this a full song? And then, I don't know. It was one of those things where I said, I could forgive this. Okay. I and did. So at forgiveness, like a little <laughs> pun on the album. So 
what like basically what I'm saying, how it ended as as much as I think Paramore owes it to their fans to stick to their altar and their pop rock roots, like unlike what you're saying, Mark, I absolutely support this dance your direction they're going as well. Um it's not too hot topic y. Instead it's more Forever Twenty One, if that's fair <laughs> okay. to say, but also catchy in a good way. It just needs to be less depressing ballads. So and especially that last song on there is like even though if it wasn't so depressing in the middle, I would have forgave I wouldn't so it's nice to end the album on like a um, a ballad, but since I heard too many earlier, mm-hmm. I was like, you know, you just just kept the dance stuff going throughout, and then put the last song at the end as a ballad. So I'm gonna say um, my rating on this is I think it's 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 really it's really a fair record, and I think the direction they're going is good. So I say you should download it, check it out, see if you like it as well, and see if this um and if you like it, then definitely go back and get the previous record, and. You can be a little more cautious if you're not into pop punk about the uh, first two albums. But uh, what do you think, Mark? Yeah, I, you know, like I said, I, I really liked a lot of this album. Um, yeah, that song 26, I thought, was kind of a, a you know, it. I didn't like it. Yeah, um, it's an acoustic, total acoustic song. Yeah, so yeah. and some of the stuff, yeah, like I thought, rode the line of being a little too, too poppy, too Radio Disney. Yeah. But, um, but overall, I really liked a lot of it, and I thought it was kind of, re- you know, reinventing some of those 80s sounds and, and, and doing a good job of, of being fancy without being sh- too stupid. I don't know. Like, I f***ing, you know, I don't really like happy songs all that often, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, or stuff that's intended to, like, be like, all right, we're going to make everyone dance. Come on, guys. Do, 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 do. But did you notice, like, um, before you get reading that, if you really read their, her, the lyrics to her songs, I like when they present a, a sad mm-hmm. or thing, but have dancey stuff in the oh, background. Oh, definitely. Well, yeah. that's that to me is is what made this album good. You know, when I when you see the title "After Laughter," I mean, my brain goes to there's an old like I don't know '60s song "After Laughter Comes Tears." So that's oh, to me yeah, is where yeah. that comes from. So I'm like, all right, well, this is going to be a sad record, but then it's mostly danceable pop songs yeah. with like sad lyrics. Right. So I get, you know, that to me is like where my heart lives. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, you know, like like the reason I love that Pup album so much is because it's like these, f-ing, you know, three minutes so- long pop punk songs about like like loss and like yeah. self doubt and all this kind of stuff. So all themes that I can totally relate to. Um, I like I like this album. And I, you know, whatever. I say download it as well. Okay. Um, you know, I, I don't mind the ballads, I think, as much as you do. But at the same time, I think it's 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 like almost all nothing. They do a good job with what they decided to do. But none of the songs to me stand out as going past the point of just being, these are all pretty good. Yeah, like nothing, nothing stands out and is all that much more. You know, there's nothing that really grabs me and go, "That's the fucking hit." Like mm-hmm. I couldn't tell you what song they picked as via the single from this because they're all kind of in the same vein of like, you know, you could see any of them being a song that people would sing along to at a show or like she would dance to with on stage, but like nothing really crosses that line into like. Oh, that hook on that is so fucking good. You know, mm. they, I think they really need that. So hopefully, the next record will be just as, you know, the same kind of vibe, but with maybe a little bit stronger songwriting. Okay, so let us know what you think in the comments if you actually heard the new uh, Paramore album, because obviously we enjoyed it. And tell us if you enjoyed it as well, or if you didn't like it, or or tell us what you actually what your rating would be as well. We love to hear what you think. 